Hi, my name is Sarah and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing my August wrap up and I'm just going to get into it because I have a ton to talk about. So starting off with some stats, I read 13 books this month. Two of them were one star, one of them was two star, three of them were three stars, two of them were four stars, and five of them are five stars, which I normally don't have very many one or two stars, but I did have a lot of five stars. So I read three books physically and I listened to 10 audiobooks, which is a lot. And three of them were rereads. And then for the genre breakdown, I read eight fantasy books, two romances, two thrillers, and one contemporary, I guess. And then three of them were YA and 10 of them were adult. Okay, stats out of the way. I've got a lot of different categories to talk about today. First off, I'm gonna quickly talk about a book that I did not finish, and that would be My Brilliant Friend by Elena Ferrante. I got about 25% into this book and I just, it's not for me. Um, I will be talking about this a little bit more in a future unhaul video, so you'll hear about that, but I just really didn't like it and I did not want to force myself to continue reading it. Next up we have a book I have put on hold that I did start but I do plan on going back to and that would be City of Dust by Tara Sim. I had this on my August TBR and I made it what, like 50 pages into it and I wasn't feeling it. And I think that is purely my mood, not this book. So I want to come back to it to a time that I am excited to read it. I put this book on hold at the end of the month when I was kind of stressing, like, am I going to finish these other books in time for the end of the month? Which is so silly because does it matter? No. So I was like forcing myself to read this because it was on my TBR and I was just not in the mood for it. Hence why I don't normally make TBRs because it just doesn't work for me very well. So I'll get back to this sometime, I hope. Okay, next is rereads. Actually, you can see them right here. <laughs> the first one, which is four stars, is gonna be The Dream Gatherer by Christian Britton. This is, I think, two short stories in a novella set in the Green Rider universe after book six. And I didn't really remember what happened in the stories. They're fine. Uh, the first two are kind of, I don't wanna say irrelevant, but they don't follow any of the characters from the story. Uh, the novella does, and it's fun, but since I've reread it, I'm fine with not reading it again. My next reread, which was five stars, was Winterlight by Kristen Britton. I was so excited to reread this book because when I read it the first time, it was just like, I need to know what's happening right now, so I feel like I did kind of rush through it a little bit, but this time... I also read it pretty fast, but I was expecting all of the things that surprised me and made me a little upset last time. I think I enjoyed it more this time and it's huge. <laughs> I think this is like physically the largest book I own, even though it's not the longest, but it's just beefy. <laughs> but I am really glad I reread this. I I'm hoping we're going to do a live show on it on Fina's channel for the Green Rider read along because I feel like I have a lot of things to talk about. Like there's just so much in this book. So many things I forgot about. So many things I made notes on the first time and the second time. Like, ugh. And rereading the series before this again, knowing what to look for in the series, I think was quite interesting. So <laughs> my last reread for the month was Flamefall by Rosaria Munda, second book in the Aurelian Cycle series. I'll talk about this more in a minute because you know I'm talking about Fury Song. <laughs> but yes, I read this book. Obviously, I loved it. Five stars, easily. So, okay. Time for the new reads. <laughs> Getting all that other stuff out of the way. I, this month of reading was so weird. I normally don't rate so many books very low, but I rated quite a few books pretty lowly this month. So I'm going through these 
lowest rated to highest rated. So my lowest rated book of the month was Here's Looking at You by Vary McFarlane. This is a romance between a woman and the guy who made fun of her in high school. Which I, I don't know why I picked this book because there were four of this author's books at a library book sale and I picked this one and another one. And I don't know why I picked this one because like it was so bad. <laughs> so it's about this, this woman who was fat in high school and then she lost a bunch of weight and now she's beautiful. And this guy pulled this like kind of horrific prank on her in high school and so she meets him again as an adult and there's a romance between them. Uh, the trope of oh the fat girl lost weight and now she's pretty is like my least favorite thing of all time um there's a ton of lying in this book like he doesn't know who she is because he doesn't recognize her because she's skinny and pretty now and just the humor is like offensive and i mean this was published in 2013 which I can kind of see how that humor would make sense then, but at the same time I'm, I was just like, excuse me? And on the back, I don't know if you could see this, there's a little like guide on what's in the book and the biggest part is humor. No, it's not funny. It's not funny. Also it was like weirdly paced. For the first 150 pages you didn't really have any interactions between these two characters and I was like, this is a romance, isn't it? Like, how can we get, like, this much into a book without having romance? And, I don't know, it was a bad book. I didn't like it. I didn't like it. <laughs> so it got one star. I don't know if I said it got one star, but it did. Speaking of one stars. <laughs> I gave uh, another one star this month and that was to The Book of Night by Holly Black. I don't have as strong feelings about this book as I did about Here's Looking at You, but I just didn't like anything in this book. There, like, I didn't like the plot, I didn't like the characters, didn't like the magic, didn't like the setting. I just didn't like it. I didn't hate it, but none of those things were good to me. So it got a one star. I was gonna give it two and then I was like, but there was literally nothing about this book that I enjoyed, so I gave it a one star. I don't know. I think it's going to be a series. Definitely, obviously not continuing. Also, this book is barely 300 pages. And it, I swear, it felt like it took me weeks and weeks to read this book because I was just not enjoying it, but I really wanted to. I don't know. I'm glad it's not... Uh, hovering over my head anymore though. Next up we have my only only two star book of the month and that would be Fire Study by Maria V. Schneider. I'm really upset that I didn't like this book more. I really really enjoyed Poison Study the first book when I read it back in the fall and then I read Magic Study the second book a couple months ago and I thought it was fine but it kind of changed a lot of the things that I liked about Poison Study and unfortunately Fire Study really is pretty much the same book as Magic Study in my opinion. It has the same kind of plot lines, the same magic, all of that. I just really was disappointed. I was considering continuing in the Chronicles of Ixia because I believe it's a trilogy of trilogies but after this book I definitely won't and knowing what character the next series follows I just don't really have any interest in that either unfortunately but what can you do just realize I didn't talk about what those last two books were about book of night is like about people have like shadows and they can do magic and it takes place in our world which is another point against it I really don't care for urban fantasy and then Fire Study is about this girl, or at least the beginning of the series, is about this girl who was in prison and she can either choose to be executed or become the commander's uh, food tester or poison detector. What are those called? Food taster, I think. The commander's food taster. 
and it goes from there which that's the part I really liked about it but then the series turns into something else so anyway uh the next two books I'm going to talk about are both three stars and they're kind of my feelings on them are kind of similar so I'll talk about them at the same time but that would be The Guest List by Lucy Foley and Then She Was Gone by Lisa Jewell the guest list is about an exclusive wedding on an island and there is a murder that takes place and that's all I'll say about the plot. And then then she was gone is about this woman whose daughter was disappeared when she was 15 and it takes place 10 years after. I felt pretty meh about both of these books. They both kind of had like weird sexual stuff in them which I'm like why do all of these like mystery thriller type of books have to be sexual um because like I feel like all the other ones I've read are also similar to that but I don't know they were both entertaining when I read them but I don't think I would go back and reread them or anything like that and they really didn't stick out to me um the guest list once you figure out who is killed I stopped caring because I could absolutely see why that character was killed and I didn't care who did it because they deserved it. So I was like, any one of these people could have killed this per this person and I would be happy with it. And then she was gone. I don't want to say it was predictable, but I don't know. I don't like how it made me feel. <laughs> okay. Another three star book would be The Inheritance Games by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. This is the one I can struggle to figure out the genre of. I said it was a contemporary. It's a YA contemporary, I think, um, or mystery. I don't know. It is about a girl who's pretty poor and she finds out that she has been sort of left this inheritance from this billionaire, but she has to kind of jump through some hoops in order to inherit this fortune. And he has four grandsons who all kind of want the inheritance or part of it. And so she goes to live at this house with them. And there's all these kind of like mysteries and puzzles to solve that this man left. The premise sounds better than I think it was. Uh, <laughs> I just felt like the main character, uh, Avery, was kind of stupid. Like, she's supposed to be this really super smart girl, like, not to say that she's not smart. They kept saying how good she was at, like, games and stuff, but then once it, she was actually faced with problems, it was like she was bad at solving them. <sighs> I don't know. It was entertaining enough. I'm going to read the next two books in the trilogy because my friend recommended it and she wants to read those together, so I'm going to keep going with it, but... Not my favorite, but also not bad. So, I don't know. Next book, getting into the four star territory. I have It Happened One Summer by Tessa Bailey. This is about a woman. She has a rich stepfather who pays for all her stuff, basically. She throws a party that's like illegal and in order to teach her a lesson, her stepfather sends her back to her father's hometown in order to like teach her to be more like humble and the value of money I guess and there she meets a fisherman and there's a romance <laughs> so I read this for my book club with my friend and I was the one who picked it because she was interested in reading more romance especially more spicy romance and I was like Tessa Bailey has some spicy stuff in her books so that part definitely doesn't didn't disappoint but I read her whole uh, Hot and Hammered series about like a construction company and I think I have the same criticism. Her books kind of focus more on the like physical aspect of the relationship rather than the like emotional or like relationship part of the relationship. So it just is like, yes, it's entertaining, but also it's not my favorite romance I've ever read because the romance really felt based on nothing. So it was fun while I read it, but I don't know. Also, the guy in the book, can't even remember his name. Is it Charlie? No, <laughs> Brendan. Um, he only eats like fish and chips at this restaurant and I was like, oh my God, I want fish and chips so bad after this book. <laughs> also, he goes fishing for king crab legs and I was like, I could go for some crab now. So <laughs> I feel like 
it might be a little bit of a problem if I come out of a romance book really like just wanting to eat fish and chips. Okay, time for the five stars. This was hard deciding the order of these books, but here we are. <laughs> the first five star book of August was Nettle and Bone by T. Kingfisher. I've been wanting to pick up T. Kingfisher's books for a while, so I'm so glad I finally got to this one. It took me forever to read this book, and it is small because I was really busy when I was reading it, and I think that impacted my enjoyment of it. So, even though I still get it five stars, I loved the characters. So, it basically follows this princess who has been sent to live at a monastery, I think, and her older sister is married to a prince of another country and he is mistreating her so she kind of sets out on this quest to figure out a way to get her out of that marriage. So she sets off on a quest with some other people and they go on this little quest to save her sister basically. I really really enjoyed it. I love the characters. Like so good. So. Because it took me so long to read it, I was like not loving it, but I think if I had just sat down and started reading it and like read more at a time, I would have loved it even more. My one complaint about this book is that the first chapter kind of takes place in the middle and then the next chapter you jump back and basically follow the story linearly from that. So I don't really feel like that one chapter needed to be shown first and I was kind of confused because I was like, I thought the next chapter was kind of just starting as like a, a short flashback, but then I was like, the whole book is the flashback, but then you eventually catch up to that first chapter and carry on from there. But I really liked it and the characters were so good. Okay, second to last book, A Labyrinth of Science and Sorcery is by Curtis Craddock, the second book in the Risen Kingdom series. It was so good. Like, look at how many tabs are in there. I just, I love this series so much. Isabel and Jean-Claude. <laughs> if you wanna know what the series is about, I will link my review of the first book because I love it so much. We got to see more of the magic in this book. We got to see some new characters. We got to get to know some of the characters from the first book a little bit more. It was so good. This was going to be my favorite book of the month, but if you've seen my past few videos, you probably know what my favorite book of the month was. <laughs> Fairy Song by Rosario Manja. <sighs> I'll link my spoiler free review and my spoiler vlog of this book and series, but oh my god. Like. It was so good, even though it wasn't my favorite in the series. It actually might be my least favorite in the series, but it was still so good. Like, the characters in the series are ones that I could just read about forever. Like, I could just read their life story and there doesn't have to be a plot or a point or an end goal. I just want to hear about them. So, <laughs> me gushing about these two books, I'm like, does this make up for how much I hated years looking at you <laughs> but oh man both of those were so good so good also super quickly I want to talk about my September TBR definitely not making as big of a TBR this month as I did last month or in August because that was too stressful I'm not a TBR person um I do have a secret TBR video for this month, so there are going to be six books on that. Um, they are all super short, so I'm not worried about getting those done. And then the rest of my TBR is just sequels. So actually, first I want to finish Alloy of Law. I got about halfway through and I could have read more, but I didn't want to force myself into reading it. So I want to finish rereading this and then follow up with Shadows of Self, because my plan is to reread one, one a month until The Last Metal comes out. Then, predictably, I want to read The Last Uncharted Sky, which is the final book in the Risen Kingdoms trilogy. I am super excited about this, but I also 
do not want it to end. So, and then the other two books on my TBR are going to be The Hawthorne Legacy and The Final Gambit by Jennifer Lynn Barnes, which are the sequel to The Inherited Schemes. So, super quick. <laughs> that is it. I have a huge stack of books to go find a spot for on my bookshelf that I'm very excited about, but oh, lots of reading this month. But were there any books that I talked about that you have thoughts on, please let me know. But that is it for me today, and I'll see you all next time. Bye!